As 2021 ended, the Philippines had a blockbuster year for its startup ecosystem, as a report done by the Philippine Venture Capital Report 2022 saw that the nation had ended the year with over $1 billion of capital going inside the various startup businesses the Philippines had. This was a record-breaking year. After all, in 2020, the country only saw $369 million in funding, along with 2019, where it only saw $152 million, which goes to show that the Philippines has a booming startup ecosystem, right? Well, not exactly. Despite the growing boom in investments, both foreign and local, these are way far off compared to its Southeast Asian peers. In fact, the entire region had gone on to raise over $25.7 billion worth of funding, whereas the Philippines had only a little over a billion dollars. But this is not the focus of today's video. What needs to be addressed is the fact that the Philippines' technology startups are nowhere to be seen. Hence, it may be why we are not seeing enough foreign investments. But how so? Where are our homegrown startups and is it not everywhere already? By that means, do we not already have access to these products and services offered by technological companies? Well, yes and no. First of all, the most prominent tech firms that are operating in today's landscape are not Philippine-based. The biggest names we have in our nation's e-commerce field are the likes of Lazada, Shopee, Zalora, Carousel, and other smaller competitors. But these four are given to be the largest platforms, with the first two mentioned assumably occupying a large market share of the entire e-commerce market. This is a problem. The first is that none of these mentioned companies are home-based, meaning they came from foreign markets. Lazada was founded in Singapore and is today owned by the China-based Alibaba Group. Shopee is owned by C Limited, a publicly traded in the New York Stock Exchange, but is still founded and based in Singapore. Zalora and Carousel are both of the same nature. None of these companies are founded, neither are headquartered in the Philippines. Now there are benefits from these. Obviously, the platform provides local sellers and local buyers to interact, which then paved the way for the e-commerce revolution in the Philippines and was even one of the greatest platforms during the times when the nation had a rough lockdown. But the downside is that these platforms are not owned by local businesses, where we could say that had it been in the Philippines, then presumably it would have generated more tax revenue for the government assumably employ more people, and even spark an interest in entrepreneurship of the nation. These mentioned are also not the only platform providers. We have it in almost every sector. From our food delivery tech enterprise, Singapore-based Grab, to logistics businesses such as Thailand-based Flash Express and Indonesian-based JNT Express, to several financial technology companies that have seen the biggest growth among the entire startup landscape. But one may argue that this is where we actually reign. Our fintech landscape is majority homegrown and locally based. Gcash, Paymaya, and so much more. What lacks to really make a startup, however, is still there. These three mentioned are the biggest financial technology companies in the Philippines, but they do not follow the startup journey the usual ones do where a group of individuals comes together with a vision or dream to change the status quo. These three were bred in the house of the country's largest conglomerates. Gcash is under Mint, and Mint is a joint venture of China-based Ant Group and local-based Ayala Corporation and Globe Telecom. The same goes with Paymaya, which is under Voyager Innovations and is yet again under the telecommunications company known as PLDT. The position that these conglomerates hold may as well indicate that even though we may have our very own businesses that are pretty disruptive in nature, they are still far from changing the status quo of who is rich. At the end of the day, the conglomerates still and will always hold their titles as monopolies, duopolies, and other terms out there. Further, this is also evident in international-based operating in the local country. For example, GrabPay Philippines operates in the Philippines but is actually under a scheme that shows that it is a joint venture with SM Corporation or Zalora Philippines which is kind of the same with Ayala Corporation. These should be anticipated as they were the chosen partners or the partners chose them because they hold the capital, infrastructure and experience needed to execute growth. Now let us go back to our initial idea. Is the Philippines lacking its own technology businesses? Based on our view so far, yes, we may be lacking homegrown businesses. While we may have seen these play out in the same way as our neighboring countries, 
we think that they were still able to breed their own homegrown startups. We mean something like Indonesia's GoTo Group or Malaysia's Carsum. Vietnam Sky Mavis, famous for developing non-fungible token-based online video game Axie Infinity, and even Thailand's BitCub, which eventually saw its business being majority bought off by the large conglomerate Siam Commercial Bank, and so much more. There is far more public data about homegrown businesses from these nations mentioned. And the Philippines? We are lacking the same tech startups the way they do. So is all lost for the archipelago nation? Do we still have a chance to grow our local startups that may one day compete against these gigantic platforms? Or even, are there actual startups that are trying to displace the status quo? So far, however, there are not any real contenders for this. Complacency could have been a factor, or one could also suggest that these platforms are already too big to even fathom challenging them. And the fact that there are a lot of barriers meant that we may not even see these local-based startups anymore. We may forever be complacent about relying on foreign-based companies and only see a few startups be homegrown. But all is not lost. Not yet, at least. We base our opinion on a few factors. The first is that the government is acting. We have so far seen some government initiatives such as the Innovation and Startup Act emerge, which is a Republic Act that was signed in 2019. And this aims to promote and strengthen the entrepreneurial ecosystem and culture of the Philippines. With the government acting in place to promote local-based companies, we may eventually see a growing trend. The second factor are the private companies. We are now also seeing conglomerates opening up venture funds to help invest in their local startups. Some of the most known are the Ayala-backed AC Venture Funds, which have so far helped invest in local startups. The Kickstart Ventures, which is a globe-backed venture fund that has done the same. These, along with many more out there, have so far spurred growth through investments within local businesses. The last factor is the most exciting opportunity presented in the entire startup ecosystem of the Philippines. We believe it is in the blockchain industry, a notorious sector for being both disruptive and filled with a lot of risks. A statement compiled by what has been shown so far in the world. But what makes this such a disruptor is because the Philippines is a crypto-attached nation. We are among the highest adopters of crypto coins and even among the largest players on crypto-based games such as Axie Infinity. And these adoptions are assumably being taken into our future growth as a blockchain-enabled country. So far as well, we are not seeing the same factors play out with other industries. In fact, we are seeing the opposite. A growing number of blockchain startups are now spurring across the Philippines. We even have a local-based venture capital firm known as the Yield Guild Games, or YGG for short that invests in local and worldwide blockchain-enabled startups, which means that the Philippines has both a venture capital firm and applications spurring out in recent years of this industry. The Philippines is lacking. We still do not see the same local competitive presence from our own local entrepreneurs, but these can and will change as we become more adaptive to the world around us.